Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today, we're going to be talking about the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And that guy just helps us calculate the pH of a buffer system, but it's faster. And we can only use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation if our concentrations are much bigger than our equilibrium constant, about a thousand times bigger. Now, if you're not familiar with buffers, I recommend you check out my video on buffers first, which I will link to down below. So, remember, Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, shortcut to calculating the pH buffers. You can only use it if the concentration of your acid or base is about a thousand times greater than Ka. So let's go through this equation for a few seconds, and then we'll do three practice problems. So, this equation just basically tells us that the pH of buffer is equal to our pKa. Now, the pKa may be a new symbol for you, but that's just basically the negative log of our Ka. Whenever you see P anywhere, that just means negative log. So, since I say pKa, it means negative log of Ka. And the last part of that equation is just the concentration of our base divided by the concentration of our acid. In a problem where you're asked to calculate the pH of a buffer, you usually be given the Ka, the concentration of your acid, and the concentration of your base, which makes this a pretty straightforward problem type. So let's do an example. This asks, what is the pH of 2.1 molar sodium fluoride mixed with 2.5 molar hydrofluoric acid? Notice this is a buffer because I have right here a weak acid. It starts with H. HF is one of your really important weak acids. And this guy, NAF, is going to dissociate in solution and give me just F minus and Na floating around separately. And so that means we're going to have an equilibrium here between HF, a weak acid, and F minus its conjugate base, and that gives us a buffer. So, what are we going to do here to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation? Well, we want to first just make sure it's justified to use, and so that means we want to check that the concentration is greater than a thousand times Ka. So choose the smaller concentration, and we'll take 2.1. Usually they're pretty close, and it won't actually matter which concentration you take. And we want to know, is that 2.1 greater than a thousand times our Ka? Our Ka is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4. That's just given in the problem. Well, that's 2.1, and the, the right-hand side of that, if we put it in our calculator, will give us 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 1, or 0.66. So yes, it is. Our, our uh, concentration is more than 1,000 times bigger than our Ka, and that means we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Cool, so we can use it. Now, you may ask, do I really have to do that? And the answer is, yeah, because if you can't use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, you have to use an ice table instead. All right, so we've done step one. We're good there. And the step two is to identify the acid or base. We've already said the HF is the acid, and our F minus is the base over here. And then we want to calculate the pKa. So pKa is just equal to the negative log of Ka. In this case, that's negative log of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4, and we'll get for our pKa out 3.18. Now, there are other digits there, and I'll keep them around in my calculator so I don't round them off here. But for writing it down, I'll round to 3.18. And so that means now we can just go ahead, after we have the pKa, and solve for pH with our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which says pH is equal to pKa, that's 3.18, plus log... Up top goes the concentration of our base, which we already said is this guy, so 2.1 molar. And on the bottom, we have the concentration of our acid, which is HF, at 2.5 molar. And so when I plug that into my calculator, I'll get 3.18 plus the log of 2.1 divided by 2.5. And that gives me a pH of 3.10. So that's the pH. Notice that's way easier than going through a long ice table to get the pH of this buffer. Let's do another example. Here we're given the, uh, a solution of NH3, that's ammonia, mixed with NH4Cl. Now this might look a little different to you, and that's because you don't see one that's an obvious acid. You actually have here a base. One hint that you have a base is that this says Kb. Another hint is that NH3 is in fact a weak base. If you're not sure about what's a weak base and weak acid, just look at a table of acids and bases when you have to do this problem. NH3 turns out to be a really common example of a weak base. And so you have here a weak base with its conjugate acid as a buffer. The conjugate acid of NH3 is NH4+. It's just added, added a hydrogen onto there. And that's what you're going to get out of your NH4Cl. This NH4 ion is the conjugate acid. So if you start with a base, the way you use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is you first have to calculate Ka. We've been given Kb, but that's no good for us. Our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation has Ka in it. 
So how do we calculate KB? Well, we just use this equation here, which tells us that KA times KB is equal to 10 to the minus 14th. So KA times KB is equal to 10 to the minus 14th. And that means that we can do KA is equal to 10 to the minus 14th divided by KB. And if I plug in my KB there, then I will get out 1.151 times 10 to the minus 11th. So that gives me my KA. And now I need to check, now that I have my KA, I need to check is my concentration a 1,000 times greater. Well, the KA is 10 to the minus 11th. That's like 1 10 billionth, really 100 billionth, really, really small. So that's going to be much, much smaller than a 1,000 times our concentration. And so that's good. So we're good to go ahead and just identify our acids and bases. And here, we've said that NH3 is a base, so that's our base, and this guy is actually our acid. And now we want to calculate the pKa of the acid. So pKa is just equal to the negative log of our Ka, which is that guy, 1.51 times 10 to the minus 11th. And when we plug that in, we're going to get 10.819. Now I can solve for my pH, last step pH is equal to pKa, which is 10.819, plus log of the concentration of my base, 0 0.15 molar, because my base is that ammonium, divided by, or I'm sorry, ammonia, divided by the concentration of my acid, which is my ammonium chloride, at 0 0.2 molar. So that gives me the pH of my buffer solution. When I plug that in, it's a 10.69. Not surprising that my pH is high, it's above 7, because I started with a base. So this is a buffer that works at basic pHs. All right, let's do one more example. Here, I want to know what is the pH of 0 0.1 molar iodic acid mixed with 0 0.02 molar sodium iodate. Well, let's start by checking to see if the concentration is a thousand times greater than Ka. So we'll take our smaller concentration, 0 0.01 molar. We want to know, is this guy greater than a thousand times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 1? Well, when I plug that right side into my calculator, I will get 160. So the question is, is 0 0.01 greater than 160? And the answer is no. So that means that I can't use the Henderson-Hasselbeck. It doesn't work here. The Henderson-Hasselbeck only works when our concentration is much bigger than our K. So instead, we're going to have to use an ice table to do this calculation. Which, again, you can check out the video linked to below that goes through that process. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, you can leave them below. Uh, and you can subscribe to receive future updates.